Lucky old Byron, lucky nice and warm here. Chilly, of course, there's this grey hooded kingfisher. That is a turn up for the books. Isn't he lovely? He's not really in focus, but he is very lovely. Let me try and focus him quickly. Hang on, wait. Oh, I should say that's going the wrong way. I'm trying to do this manually. You see, what this thing does is it thinks that it's looking at the grass. It is, of course, mistaken. It is looking at the kingfisher. There we go. That's much better. Kirsten, we'll have no more comments from you about blurry safaris. Isn't he lovely? And he's got no idea he's being so closely observed. Ooh, that's nice and focused. Beautiful. Look at the wind just ruffling his little grey hood. And I tell you, what I like about these chaps is not so much the halcyon blue, which is very pretty, but it's that russet kind of uh, reddish brown you can see. Russet is reddish brown, really, underneath the blue there. And I think that that makes some very attractive birds. And some lovely purple flowers beyond. Watch, I'm going to do a focus pull, Kirsten. Are you watching? Oh, ooh. There we go. Take that back. There we go. Oh, he's gone. Let's see if we can find him again. Put it back on autofocus. See if we can find what he's tried to catch. Maybe a frog, maybe an insect. Unlikely to be a fish, although they will eat fish, of course, if they can. There he is. No, that wasn't him. It was another bird. Anyway, that was the grey-hooded kingfisher. That's very nice indeed. Then we'll go across to our very favourite, certainly Steph's very favourite, because Steph has spoken extensively of this bird, the yellow-billed stork. They're ever faithful, the yellow-billed stork, always fishing over here and helping us out when we don't have a huge amount else to show you right now. Uh, Scott, of course, would have a huge amount to show you, but, oh, dislodged a fish, come on, strike. But it started to rain down where Scott is, so that's why he's not with you at the moment. He is in amongst, of course, what might turn into a hunt fairly soon. So maybe if it stops, we'll be lucky. Come on, catch a feature for us in amongst the martins that are flying around and swallows and of course the hippo in the background. I'm very glad I don't have to spend all day long in the water when it's cold like this. Sina, you say how do they f catch fish, is that what your question was? How do they hunt them? Well, this yellow-billed stork here is hunting fish uh, basically by feel. So it's, it will look as well, but it's they, the birds that often storks and some of the herons too, will fish by basically feeling any disturbance that comes along through the water. So it, they've got specialized, I hesitate to use the term organ, but uh, I guess they've got specialized nerve endings in their beaks and they can feel the slightest movement. And then their reaction speed is enormously fast and they snap that beak shut as soon as anything goes anywhere near it. Uh, some birds, like the Hammerkorp, have got special sensors in their feet, and they use that to sort of um, sense if there's any movement in the mud through which they're walking. They, of course, eat frogs much more than they do fish. But the stork is waiting very patiently for some fish, obviously thinking there's something uh, to be had in that position. And I mean, it's a little bit like watching lions on the hunt. You just don't know what you're going to get, except that I suspect that a stork is a lot more successful every time it, well, snaps its beak shut than a lion is when it's on the hunt. Isn't that nice? Let's see what else we can find. There we go. Now, I'm just a bit sad that there aren't any crossings going on at the moment, but that is, of course, because the temperature is pretty chilly. So we'll zoom all the way around and then go around the other side. Jen, this is the second time I've been asked this and the second time that I've been have it, had to answer in the negative. You say, is the river flowing uh, more quickly today? A few days ago we had the same question and Jen, it isn't. It's definitely flowing, I would say, more slowly than it has in the last week or so. Ooh, there's a very big crocodile. 
and I think the reason for that is that there hasn't been a much rain in this area, but I think you'll find tomorrow it might be flowing a little bit more strongly. Struggling there with the current is this crocodilian. Where is it going? Often crocodile movement like this up and down the river is a precursor to some sort of crossing somewhere. And unfortunately, two of our cameras at the crossings are down at the moment, and so it's quite difficult for us to show them all. We've only got the two. Now, quite astonishingly, Byron Sorrell has managed to find an enormous piece of green cheese. 